look, Lindsay. No teeth. Bye-bye, Jack. You know, most people think accidents just happen. That it has to do with good luck and bad luck. Don't you believe it. Every accident is caused. The reason may be an unsafe condition, like a broken ladder or bad brakes on your bicycle. Or it could be caused by fooling around. Now, here at Safety Central, we learn to use the best survival weapon we have, our knowledge. Now, we're not born with it, and we have to learn it. And that's why we're here, to learn about safety sense. This is a city. It's where most of us live. It isn't easy living in the city, especially if you're a kid. Home, sweet home. A place where we're all protected from the bad things that can happen in the world. A home can also be the most dangerous place in the world if you don't set up some common sense safety rules. Now, let me introduce you to the best friends you can have in an emergency. Chill is a good friend, uh, but I meant the phone. We can get the support or help we need by smart use of the phone. And right next to it, your own personal emergency phone list. One of the first things you should do is sit down with your parents and make a list of any numbers you might need in an emergency. Like your parents' work numbers, grandparents, and a designated adult. Now, just like a designated hitter in baseball, a designated adult is someone who will go to bat for your parents in an emergency when they are not available. You should also include your family doctor, poison control, and emergency numbers for your city. In most cities, you can dial 911 for all emergencies, but only for a real emergency. When you need an ambulance, or to report a fire, or when you need a policeman quick. Hello? I have an emergency. A man's trying to get in my back door. This is Jill Example. I live at 14147 House Sedge Street. I'm home alone. Uh, Jill? It may be hard, but practice talking slowly enough so you're easy to understand. And always try to stay on the phone and get instructions. But if you must leave quickly to stay out of danger, just leave the phone off the hook and the operator will be able to get your address through the magic of computers. Boy. Wouldn't it be great if we all had our own private police officer guarding our house 24 hours a day? But that's just not possible. So, what do we do and what do we need when we're home alone in charge of the security of our house? Every front door should have some way to see who's at your door without opening it. And a good set of locks, properly installed, that you should always have latched when you're home alone. One thing about kids is that they trust people. Trust is a good thing, but we learn in life that trust is earned. Jack, you're on. There are people in the real world who will take advantage of our trust if we let them. Oh, that's my friend Barry Hope. Barry is an actor, and you'll have to admit he has kind of a chubby cheek face. He might be a doctor or a lawyer, or he could be someone you wouldn't want to meet on a dark night. Okay, let's see how Jack handles this situation. Who is it? Is your mother here? Um, I'm sorry, she can't come to the door right now. Now, that's not a lie. She isn't home, so she can't come to the door. Well, it's important. If you'd like to leave your number, I'll have her call you. No, uh, I have a package for her. Um, just leave her by the door and she'll get it when she can. No, she has to sign for it. Uh-oh. Now it's getting sticky. Betcha he'll ask Jack to sign for it if he opens the door. Tell you what. Why don't you open the door and sign for it? See, I told you. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to sign for anything. Well, she won't get her package in. No 
delivery man I know acts like that. Let's see if Jack was paying attention earlier. There's a man trying to break in the front door of my apartment. My name is Jack Example, and I live at 14147 Halstead. I'm home alone. Perfect, Jack. What if the stranger had been acting suspiciously, but left when you told him to? Hello, Miss Friendly. This is Jack Example. Good. He's calling his designated adult to report the incident and get advice on what to do next. One thing Jack can do is write down everything he remembers about what happened. Sounds like being a detective, huh? As a matter of fact, if your parents or the police needed any information later, they will rely on you. That sounds easier than it is. You try it. Just pause the tape and write down exactly what happened. What did the man say? What did Jack say? Describe the man. Then just rewind the tape and see how you did. There's another type of kid con that some people might try to get information from you over the phone. Remember, the first rule in any emergency is stay calm, keep cool, and think. And never give a caller any information over the phone or tell him that you're home alone. Let's see how Jack handles this one. Oh, Jack, it's for you. I'm sorry, there's no George here. Well, I'm sure I dialed the right number. What's your address? Sometimes it's hard not to answer questions for someone who's being very polite. Well, uh, what number did you want, sir? May I speak to your mother, please? I'm sorry, she's busy right now and can't come to the phone. He isn't lying. She is busy someplace else. And she can't come to the phone because she isn't there. Jack is smart enough not to let anyone know he's home alone. Suppose the last call went like this. Well, it's urgent I speak to her. Uh, it's an emergency. Uh, well, if you'd like to leave your name and phone number, I'll have her call you. I can't do that. I'm going out. Uh, I'll call back in five minutes. The next step is for Jack to call his parents or his designated adult and tell them about the call. Hello, Miss Friendly? You're way ahead of me, Jack. An unlocked door is an invitation to burglars or other types you wouldn't want to have over for dinner. One of the best habits you can have is to always lock outside doors when you go through them. But if you come home and find a door open, and you know that no one is home or should be home, do not go into the house alone. Get a neighbor or your designated adult. They may even want you to call the police. Do not take any chances. Anytime you come home and see anything suspicious, get out and get help. Don't ever feel embarrassed to call the police, even if nothing's wrong. Everyone will be happy you used your good judgment. Don't ever feel embarrassed to call for help. Even if nothing is wrong, everyone will be happy you used your good judgment. Looks like you could use a break. Let's go back over what we covered so far by filling in the pages in your guide marked Be Prepared. You can go back and play parts of this tape again and again until you know all the answers as well as we do, or even better.
And there's a sight you don't want to see. A firefighter in your house. Hi, right, Captain Truck. Aren't you a little warm in that outfit? How about your dress blues? Firefighters are known for dressing fast, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Hi, Gary. Hi, Captain Truck. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Huh. Let's have a look at your emergency control center. Okay. Be my guest. This is our fire escape plan. We have it memorized. The red line is the escape route. The dotted line is the alternate route. See that X? That's where we all meet in front of the house. When there is an emergency, we will know just what to do because we hold practice fire drills. We keep a flashlight for every member of the family and two transistor radios for emergencies when there's no power. We keep two portable first aid kits and one bigger one for everyday use. This is one of our fire extinguishers. The other one is kept in the kitchen. We read all the directions together and I wrote them down. I always remember things better if I write them down. I'm impressed. Oh, ah, how about this? A maintenance checklist. Once a month, Dad checks all the batteries and first aid supplies and initials this list with the date. If anything isn't operating properly, it's fixed or replaced. Did your parents show you where your home's electrical panel is so you can show emergency personnel? Is the fire truck red? Well, actually, uh, some are white, yellow, or other bright colors. Oh, okay. Well, I see. You've marked the water valve with bright blue colored tape to help locate it in an emergency. Excellent. And on the tape, it says water. No, it says H2O. It says water if you speak chemistry. <laughs> and uh, the gas valve? Ah, I like the yellow tape you have around the pipe. It's bright and can be seen in the dark. How about if you smell gas around the house? Don't touch any lights or switches. Get out of your house and call the fire department or 911 right away from a neighbor's house. Good. Now, let's pretend it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you're asleep. I hate getting up in the middle of the night. Try this. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm ready. That's Jack smoke detector going off. Jack, don't waste time turning a light on when you hear a smoke alarm. Don't sit up. Roll out of bed. Crawl on your hands and knees. Don't stop for anything. Leave everything. The most valuable thing in the room is you. And getting out of there is the only important thing to do. No. Always test the door first with the back of your hand. The door is warm. Do not touch the knob. The fire's on the other side. Keep the door closed and proceed with your second escape route. Jack, if you're heading for a closet, don't. You can't hide from a fire. Try stuffing something under the door to keep the smoke out of the room. When there is smoke, stay on your hands and knees. The best air is about 12 inches off the ground. Smoke is as dangerous as the fire. You can protect your face and hair by covering them with a wet towel or cloth. If your hair or clothing does catch fire, stop, drop, and roll. That's it, Jack. Stop, drop, and roll. Very good. Do not climb out of a window that's above the first floor unless a firefighter or other responsible person tells you to do so. Don't be shy. Yell for fire, loud as you can. Fire! Fire! Jack. 
You're on the first floor. You can climb out of the window. Remember to figure out a fire escape plan and practice it. Know how each exit works, especially in the dark. And one more thing we didn't cover. The fire department can't put out a fire if they don't know about it. I don't want to run to the neighbor's house in my jammies. Not a good excuse, Jack. Make sure you report a fire immediately, as soon as you're out of danger. Kids today are forced to be more self-reliant than any other time in modern history. The trick is to figure out solutions before you have to face the problems. This isn't a job that can be handled by one kid, even if that kid is me. It's a job for the whole family. Gary, you know I'm allergic to work. Oh, come on, Jack. Think of it as a game. The first thing any game needs is rules. Set aside a time to plan, a time when everyone gets together to decide on your house rules, and agrees to follow them. Like, what can I eat? Where can I play? How should I answer the phone? Can I have friends over? What can I eat? It isn't just kids who need rules. Parents must be responsible as well. They should have their own set of rules that everyone in the family has agreed to, like calling home to check in, letting everyone know exactly when they'll be home, and calling if they'll be late. And one more thing. Ask questions. Talk about your feelings. If you're afraid or don't know an answer, talk about it. That's one big part of safety sense. One last thing. Don't stop here just watching this program. It isn't enough. Anything worthwhile takes a lot of practice. Just look at me. Welcome to the most dangerous room in the house. Jack, you're overdoing it. As I was saying, welcome to the most dangerous room in the house. There are more things that can hurt you here in the kitchen than in the rest of the house combined. Things that will mash, chop, crush, and otherwise mangle you. This kitchen is full of booby traps. Get a little careless around all this stuff, and they'll attack. Never put your fingers or a hand inside any appliance. In fact, don't use any appliance until you've been checked out by an adult and have permission to use it. If something gets caught in one, like a garbage disposal, just turn off the power and get an adult, even if you have to wait hours for one to come home. Always be extremely careful around electrical appliances. And absolutely never turn on an appliance if you're standing in water or touching water or have wet hands. And don't put any electrical parts in water. The truth is, even the most careful people can have accidents. You and I know the most important thing to do is keep calm. But what do we do next? If you're home alone, that's a problem. So I've asked Nurse Help Quick to show us some basic aid to use until help arrives. Hi, Nurse Help Quick. Hi, Gary. Well, are we ready for the horrible example? Ready. Jack example, you're on. Yeah, Gary? What do you need now? We need a horrible example so Nurse Help Quick can show us what to do. Why don't you be the horrible example and I'll help her so quick? But you do it so much better than I could. I mean, you're a natural. Okay, let's get it over with. First, know where the first aid supplies are kept in your house. Let's go check them out. Relax, I'll save you some time. Good. Everything we'll need. What? Assorted band-aids, two rolls of gauze, Butterfly bandages, large safety pins, large triangular bandages, adhesive tape and some scissors to cut it, a package of sterile pads, some antiseptic, soap, tweezers, 
towels or clean cloths for ice pack. OK. Take it away, Gary. Everyone likes to eat good food. And some people like to cook good, too. Except Jack. Jack doesn't like to cook. He loves to eat, but cooking takes too much time. So Jack takes shortcuts, rushes, and rushes, and ends up in the hospital instead of at the table. sticking out over that pepperoni that way, Jack is going to put more than his heart in his dish. And I don't have the heart to let him do that. Jack, never cut upwards with a knife. Always cut downward on a flat, hard surface. And curl your fingers under and away from blades. wondering what might have happened if I hadn't stopped Jack. Take a look. How many dangers can you count? Sliced thumb. Frayed cord near water. Pots precariously placed. Water on floor. Great for slipping. That's too many. Let's see what could have happened. a job for nurse help quick. This is a case where first aid is required, and second aid, and third, and fourth too. Oh, good. You're conscious. Oh, yeah. I just thought if I stayed here with my eyes closed, nothing else bad could happen. Oh, it will. Your mom comes home and sees a mess you made of her kitchen. If it had been a real accident, Jack, you could have been injured very seriously. Uh, could we move him to someplace a little less cluttered? No need to move. Much better. Jack, now what's the most important thing to remember in any emergency? While Jack's trying to get his act together, here's Jill. OK. Jill, what's the most important thing to remember in any emergency? Remain calm. Don't panic. Keep cool. You may feel frightened. We all do in an emergency. But in order to help the injured person, remain calm. Good. If this had been a real accident, the first thing you would do is check to see if he's having trouble breathing. Now feel for a pulse. It's usually easiest to feel it on the side of the neck. Now, of course. If the injuries look serious, Jill would dial 911 or her emergency number and give the necessary information. If there are two of you, one should make the call while the other checks for bleeding. There is bleeding and there is bleeding. And neither one should panic you. Just use your head. First, I'd find the cleanest cloth possible and press it on the cut. The bleeding should stop in a minute or two. But if the blood soaks through the first cloth, add another one right on top. Now what? We need blankets to keep him warm and the first aid kit to clean and bandage his wounds. Right. Any injury can cause shock and body temperature drops. Have you ever cut yourself and then felt sick to your stomach or dizzy when you stood up? Well, those are symptoms of shock. You might have also felt cold and shaky. Shock can be as dangerous as the injury. He had a bad fall, so Jill shouldn't move him. Besides, when he's lying down, the blood can reach his brain easier. His heart and lungs won't have to pump so hard. Now what? Well, first I should wash my hands. Right. Cleanliness is next to godliness. No, actually, it's next to play and clear in my dictionary. Please, Mr. Coleman, next.
First, clean the wound with soap and water. Rinse well with water and pat dry. Then cover the entire wound area with a bandage or gauze and tape it in place. But uh, what if someone had taken the supplies from the kit? No one would dare mess with the first aid kit. But if she couldn't find the right supplies, she could use the cleanest supplies she could find. Then, as soon as possible, tell a responsible adult about any cut or puncture wound. Even if you washed and treated it properly, you may need a tetanus shot or a booster. The important thing to remember in any medical emergency is stay calm, keep cool, and don't panic, and always get adult help. Remember, never try to move anyone who has had a severe fall. They may have broken something or injured their spinal column. Don't even try to straighten them out. Just keep them warm and as comfortable as possible until medical help arrives. The best treatment for a burn that is red and painful is to place it under cool water or apply a wet, cold cloth. Keep it under the water at least 15 minutes. If blisters form, do not break them. But if the burn is bigger than a quarter or the skin is white or charred, get help immediately. Do not put anything on the burn and do not pull off clothing that is stuck to it. What about this bruise? An ice pack can keep small bumps from turning into big bruises. Cold is also good for stinging scrapes and throbbing cuts. What else could possibly happen? You could have some broken bones. Broken bones are a common problem and kind of scary if it happens to you. Sometimes you can't even tell if a bone is broken. Do not move the victim unless he's in immediate danger. Like if a porch collapsed and might fall on him at any second. Sure, Gary. If there's an open wound, control the bleeding, but do not try to push the broken bone into place if it's sticking out of the skin. Every accident is different. We're showing you the normal procedures, but there may be exceptions. In any case, just... Use your head, which reminds me. What about that bump on his head? It hurts. Well, if it's a small bump, the ice pack should help. But if it's a big lump, or if you're dizzy, or you have a headache, or feel sick to your stomach, get emergency help. Could the bump cause a nosebleed? Well, a bump on the nose could, but many times your nose may just start to bleed and you don't know why. Jack, look out. You're going to bleed on your shirt. Very funny. Jack, if your nose were bleeding, you should sit with your head up and pinch your nose closed for at least 10 minutes. Well, it will seem like a long time, but the one mistake people make is not pinching it long enough. Make yourself comfortable, Jack. We'll talk to you later. We've got things to do. Some of the things most useful to us every day can be deadly if used wrong. It's very important to act quickly if you even think that someone has swallowed something that might be poisonous. Contact poison control or your family doctor. When you call for help, have the container with you so that they will know what the poison is. If the victim is conscious, you may give him small sips of water to dilute the poison. And remember the first rule. Stay calm, keep cool, and think. This brings up another danger, and I know just the guy to help me out. Lunch! Is it 10 minutes already? No, but I thought you might be hungry. Now you're talking. What if Jack were to choke on some food caught in his throat? The first sign that someone is in trouble is if they can't breathe. Then panic might set in. Jack should know the universal sign for choking. 
Coughing is the first way a victim can try to clear the airway. Can you cough, Jack? Can you breathe? Jill, I think we better give him a hand. The first thing to do is try to calm Jack by talking to him and telling him what you're doing. Now, this will help keep him from panicking. Next, stand behind him and wrap your arms around his waist as if you were giving him a hug. Make a fist and place the thumb side of your fist against his stomach, just below the ribs, but above the belly button. Grab your fist with your other hand and push into Jack's stomach with at least four quick upward thrusts. And ask again if he can breathe or speak. Remember to keep telling Jack what you're doing. Repeat these steps until Jack can breathe again. If the victim is an adult or too big to handle, have him sit in a chair and perform the same procedure from behind or lay him on his back on the ground. This time, use the heel of your hand to thrust. If you are the victim and you're alone, lean over the back of a chair and place it on your stomach between your rib cage and your belly button. Push heavily against the chair until the object comes out and you can breathe again. OK, Jack, you can finish your lunch. No, thanks. All right. Let's check out what we've learned by filling out the pages in our guide marked Be Prepared. If you don't know some of the answers, play the tape again. Then I'll meet you and your whole family right back here to work on some things together. I bet by now you know the first rule of any emergency by heart. Think. You're smart. But if you panic and get excited, you can't think properly. So stay calm. Which is hard to do when you're in pain. Are you watching blood oozing into your very own body? That's the first and most important emergency rule. Don't panic. You may feel frightened. We all do in an emergency. But stay calm. Do what you can to help yourself and the victim. And get help. Well, watching this program is a good start. But it certainly won't make you an expert. <sighs> the very best present you could give yourself or your family is to contact your local Red Cross and enroll in their first aid and CPR courses. It could be the present of life for someone you love. Gary, what about all the people who might need to help your family in an emergency? All the people who might need to help your family in an emergency should have a medical release signed by your parents, giving the hospital or doctor permission to take care of you. Your local hospital can give you the right wording. If there's any problem, tell them Jack sent you.